before I start, I'd like to apologize if at any given point you hear my bird. He's very active today and he's kinda in a little bit of a mood, so I'm really sorry if you can hear him. <laughs> but anyways, I figured that since I do art, I talk about art related things. I consider myself passionate about art. Uh, passionate enough to look into art history and passionate enough to notice how art affects people. Quite honestly, it's one of my favorite aspects about art. In this video, despite having the ability to talk about things I love about art in the community, I'm talking about the glorification and romanticization of mental illness in art and the community. Which is something I personally hate because it gets gross, especially when you realize how god-awful a lot of artists were, like Picasso, for example. So quick disclaimer, I will be talking about depression, abuse, and various other sensitive topics along with the glorification of these topics. If you don't like hearing about these things for your own respected reasons, I won't blame you for clicking off. Now, let's get into this absolute mess. So, I'm going to start off with Picasso, mainly due to him being the artist I hate most and because he's freshest on my mind. Um, a little unknown fact about him is he was an abuser and a pedophile in the sense that he married a 17 year old girl when he was 45 and still living with his previous wife. I understand times were different, it was like the 1930s, but that fact irks me and no one can stop it from irking me. It just it doesn't sit right. <laughs> Not only did he marry this young girl, he was quite abusive towards her. And he then eventually left her for yet another woman who also just happened to be an artist. And he even made the two physically fight over him, and he called it like one of his most favorite memories. He enjoyed it a lot. I can't find any more specific accounts of his abuse, but it was so horrible to the point where his own grandchildren couldn't even live with his paintings after he died, selling them so as to not be haunted by his past torment. Both of his wives, after his death, had killed themselves, which would then be romanticized by the media as them feeling as though they couldn't go on without him. I would comment on how just wrong that is, but I'm not a victim of abuse and I just can't form a statement that doesn't feel like it could possibly be harmful or is possibly uneducated, so I'm sorry for that, but I can assure, however, they did not kill themselves because they couldn't live on without him. Now, if Picasso was such a bad person, why do we treat his art like it's the holy grail? I hear you, a tiny baby child, asking. Well, the answer isn't quite simple. But the main reason is glorification. A common phrase in not just the art community, but sort of everywhere, is they're just a tortured artist. Being tortured or abusive for whatever reason is inexcusable. No one makes good art because they're in pain. They make good art because they're talented. Picasso's misogyny cannot be excused because, ooh, cubism. Abuse can't be excused because, mmm, famous man. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't like his art. He's dead. The money isn't going to go to him. <laughs> but it's important to know the story behind many of his pieces, because a lot of them are misogynistic. <laughs> but it's important to know that he was a real person, and his victims were, slash, are, real people, whom he greatly affected in many negative ways, saying he was 
just a tortured artist excuses gross behavior simply because he put paint on a canvas. Also, hot take, I hate his cubism. As I've gotten older and more involved in the art community, I've noticed that like it's one of the ugliest styles. But you know, that's just me. I won't shame you for liking it. I Please not right now. But yeah, it there's also like the fact that he's a misogynistic abuser that's turned me off. To his style, along with like his non stylistic pieces. But yeah, that's enough about him though. Let's go on to talk about one of my favorite artists. I can say without a single doubt in my heart that Van Gogh is at least number two on my list of favorites. I think his work is amazing, the colors are always beautiful, and so many paintings are iconic. Because he's my favorite, I bet you can imagine how- Sir, not right now. Because he's my favorite, I bet you can imagine how informed I am of how much of a terrible life he had, and how opinionated I am about certain people who like his work. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have a strong distaste. For people who think any artist's work is only good because the artist is depressed. I'm depressed. I do art. Where is my trophy? Where's my flower crown edits on Tumblr? Where's my museum exhibit, huh? <sighs> Anyways, it's no secret that Van Gogh had a disastrous life. Worse than Psyche Case, which I now realize the next day when it's not 1.50 in the morning, it's a terrible joke, but it's in the script so I'm keeping it. He was most well known for cutting off his ear and sen sending it to a woman, of whom he loved. Which is incorrect, by the way. He had actually gotten into an argument with another artist, and while hallucinating, cut off his ear, not remembering anything afterwards. It wasn't a lady he loved either, it was a prostitute from a nearby brothel, and that part of the story is alleged also, so <laughs> this to me is a clear example of his mental illness being romanticized, claiming that in a depressive yet love-stricken episode, he cut his ear clean off and mailed it to a lovely lady which he had fallen in love with. Or that's at least how it read to me as a kid, and no one ever questioned it either. It doesn't help that during these times, he had painted pieces such as Starry Night. The truth behind Van Gogh is he was going through a lot. He felt like a burden to his brother, his work wasn't selling, he fluctuated between feeling insane and having strokes of creative genius. He had lost memories and spouts of blackouts and rage. He only ever sold one painting and is now known as a renowned artist who is quirky and eccentric, rather than a man in deep pain. When talking about Van Gogh, I hear the term tortured artist the most, along with the glorification of his depression and his various other mental illnesses. Even when talking about clone high Van Gogh, this can be heard. Fans of him in the show consider him to be an uwu soft boy when he's a teen who probably wants to kill himself. Which, I mean, same, but when you talk about actual people and their depression, let alone when I talk about it, I'm not called an uwu bean. I'm called weird and sick and told that I need to go to therapy, whilst I already am in therapy. I think the main reason this happens way more with dead people or TV characters is because they're so dehumanized. Even on the internet, with people from the other side of the world interacting with each other, there's a lot of dehumanization. 
combined with the anonymity, it leads to the glorification of things like this. I believe that, perhaps, as someone who struggles with depression and various other things, including suicidal ideation, it affects me negatively to see how many people think that Van Gogh was ever a good artist because he cut off his ear or was possibly colorblind or had spouts of dementia. It's almost treating mental illness as if it's a privilege when it's the opposite. I'd give anything, absolutely anything, to not deal with this and I'm sure Van Gogh would have too. So please don't treat it as if we're blessed by the gods because we're not. Van Gogh was a good artist, dare I say great artist, because he had a brother who cared for him and encouraged his talent. Van Gogh was a good artist because he's passionate about his work and through the pain he kept pushing. His depression had nothing to do with his talent. He was talented because he nurtured his natural abilities, just as Picasso was a great artist because he nurtured his abilities. Trauma and experiences make the person, not the art. The person, the artist, makes the art, not their depression, not their abusiveness, and believing so is harmful to those who are struggling with mental illness. That's gonna be it for this video. I'm sorry it got so heavy. <laughs> I know these subjects can be hard to stomach and talk about, and that's why I think it's important that we talk about these things, because it can be genuinely harmful to people to just sit and be quiet. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed my ramble and I hope you come back for more, if there ever is more. Uh, stay safe and you're epic. I just wanted to say real quick before I leave for good, this isn't my own original thing. This is a repaint that I got permission to do from the artist Pink Artsy Burger on Instagram. I'll link them down in the description. Please go follow them. They're really cool and they're really nice. So yeah. Okay. Bye now.